in the COVID ward and she got COVID and her husband got COVID. Mm. Pair of them. And the, her husband still suffers a bit with long COVID. Mm. <laughs> On that note, let's not talk more, any more about COVID. It's Andy's no, fault. No, we don't want to. That's fault. right. It's Andy's fault, you know, but for talking about COVID. I could show you the massive great brace I've got on my leg. Hey, steady. It's from oh, the, hang on a minute. Look, it's look. from the, the top of my thigh down to my no. ankle. Oh. <laughs> uh, just, and that's just to keep my knee in place. I think they've gone a bit over the top. It's to keep you in place by the sounds of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had an experience on the weekend. This woman said, oh. Do you, do you want to see my operation? She only had one on her buttock, didn't she? An operation on her buttock? She, she, lifted up, she lifted up her dress right, and showed me a bum cheek with a scar on it. Oh. Why did she do not, that, Carl? It's not the type of thing I want to say. And it was in, a, in an area with a load, of, a load of people as well. Mm. Just think what the children must have thought about that. But any, anyway, uh, right, Drina, we got Drina tonight for once because Drina didn't, you know, couldn't be bothered to turn up last week. Um, <laughs> oh, Drina did give an apology, didn't you, Drina? Love, I did. You did, you did. I was sorry. Yeah, well, you you better be sorry. I'm, I'm just, it's just not good enough. Um, no Claire tonight. All right, then we got um, David. Any news from uh, Sandra? Well, I, um, I rang her today. She's getting better. But I've been suffering with my uh, blood sugar today, so I couldn't pick her up. But she'll be back here. She hopes to be here next week. Oh, wow. Oh, good. 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 Well, we, we, we did have Claire last week as well, so we haven't got Claire this <coughs> week. Um, strangely enough, we had six people all together last week, including me. Seven people this week. Uh, but Trina was away. Anne was away. Um, yeah, it's a bit strange. Right, okay. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the dreaded announcement. Um, I, I know Rogers. I I know where uh, David's already sent uh, five hundred quid to me, so that's okay. Um, right. Don't don't forget your monies are now due for the classes, the fifty shekels. Right, and um, um, I just thought I'd let you know. Okay. You Including should have you mine. I've sent mine. You should have when, mine. When did you send it? Oh, I think it was last Wednesday or Thursday. Good Lord. That's a bit key. Good Lord. Did you say you sent it? I've, I've sent it. Yeah, I've sent mine too. The post strike on. Hang on a minute. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, I did mine about 10 minutes ago, though. So, might you, unless you've just checked, which, of course, you should have done just before yeah, you came you told online. Us. No. <laughs> my, my, I, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit concerned about Margaret's. Oh yeah, that's. Big. I have got it, haven't you, Ma Margaret? Margaret, just, just let, just give me a minute, flipping mm. egg. Hey, it's gone hey. out of my account, so it's better be there. It's a long way to Wales. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. You, you did yours via PayPal, Andy? Did you? I did. Yeah, only, only about ten minutes ago. Then. Oh my God, Margaret! How, how the, what, what happened there? Oh, what you've got it, haven't you? Yeah, Ma Margaret, I, I, I do apologise. I, 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 I have no idea what happened there. Got it and spent it. Oh. Yeah. Hey, hang on a minute. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. <laughs> Fripper, hang on a minute. You're all going to say hey. it now. We're going to be all bloody all night looking at this uh, record. Those towers don't come cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've got to be honest. Shut up. Well, we, we want a full collection, me and Pete. We want four of them. We want our own concentration. Well, one for each camps. corner. Yeah, that'd be great. But no, no, no. There's three in a corner, according to Pete. <laughs> so, uh, right, okay. <clears throat> right, okay. Let, let's, um, strangely enough, the light's a bit weird here. So, uh, okay, uh, Pete, any news from you, darling? No, no. Well, you're just going to go on about bloody towers again, aren't you? Uh, Margaret, anything you want to say? Uh, no, there was something, but I can't remember. i got to be very careful with Margaret. I use, I, she said I insult her too much each week. So I, I, she said I need to pick on uh, Drina for a change. So yeah. I'll be picking on Drina tonight. Good. Uh, that's true, isn't it, Margaret? Shh. Yeah. Right. 
Yep, don't, Margaret, don't have to agree with what I say. Right, Drina, <laughs> anything you want to say, darling? No, thank you. Do you know, I can't hear a... Yeah, I can hear you, but it's, it's raining every... Uh, what about <laughs> you, uh, Andy? Well, I went to another Lycian site the other day. Mm. Oh. Well, you, you just happened to be, you, you know, in Arnside and you just went to a Lycian well, site. Well, I mean, Arnside fine. now, yeah. Yeah, I get about a bit, you know. I think, uh, pr privileges. But, uh, yeah, right, I went okay, to one then. called Latoon, which is... Uh, right, hang on a minute. Andy, if you're going to blame me do this, we need to have images up. Give me, give me the right spelling. L-E-T-O-O-N. Oh, you, you've got to be you've got to be having a laugh. Mm, it's a funny name, isn't it? So, yeah. but yeah. it is Lycian, but uh, and it was uh, a sanctuary um, for all their kind of festivals and things. Which hang, was, on, we're getting, hang on, we're you can't let Andy. Hey, you're just too, hey. you're just too quick. Hang on, I got to get this up here. Latun Latunia. Just is that the one? They're just called Latun. Might, maybe they call it Latunia, but it's on the signs. It says Latun. Andy, Andy, Andy. Look, nobody wants to show off. Right, let, let's get you on here. Right, okay. We're going to get some images up here. We're going to give it the floor to you. Hang on a minute. Let's just give it a go. Okay. Um, screen. Right, Andy, go for it. On three, two, one. Go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the picture of the the temples down by the. Um, the spring, the uh, sacred spring, which they had, which was um, sort of developed by the uh, the, uh, the Lycians and then the Romans as well. It was done to Leto, the, the same lady that had uh, Apollo and Artemis. Um, so um, it was quite interesting place. And they've got lots of terrapins and frogs in there. So. Oh, I like terrapins. But it was underwater and they've been doing some excavations by draining it and getting some, getting some, <clears> finding some quite interesting stuff. But big, big, big temple site, really big, you know. So. Okay, two, two questions, Andy, right? Yeah. If lots of these sites have got silted up harbours, right? How, how is the water level here? Well, explain that for me, please. Uh, that's that is really quite bizarre because that's actually it's nowhere near the sea. That one, that's that's not a silted up one. That's inland, near about two miles away from their capital. Um, I can't remember Ankara. the name of Kosa. Kos, Kos. Oh right, I thought you were talking about yeah. the Turkish yes. capital. Right, go on. Uh, no, 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 not Turkish capital. The the, the Lycian capital. Mm. Um, and, 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 you know, it's close enough to be linked and it's up in a valley. So I don't know why, other than it being natural. There are a lot of natural springs around there, even down by the beach where we were. They were coming out under the water, which is really weird because you get this kind of you'd be swimming along this lovely warm water and suddenly going to something freezing cold and it would be changing color slightly. And they were just coming up underneath. So it, it's just a natural spring out of the mountains. That's in. You were swimming in this water with terrapins. No, 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 and all no, not in there. No, no, that's not nice there. No, that, no, the the the, the water in the seawater, the Mediterranean, is where I was swimming. Um, oh. They had turtles in there, much bigger than the terrapins. Oh. But uh, but uh, there's also a uh, big amphitheater there, about six and a half thousand seater, um, which is first century BC. Um, but. Uh, I can't find you can find a oh, hang oh on. yeah nice that? yeah unusual mosaic there that's in the, one of the uh, temples possibly to Apollo or Artemis not sure but really weird uh, mosaic yeah I don't I, I've never seen one quite like that before uh, looks like it's been rebuilt as well because all this, all the rest are all over the place Byzantium Chapel a bit nearby as well which looked quite a nice one at one time uh, with some nice marble floors but. Met all well, in ruin, really. They reconstructed the pillars and the columns of one frontage of one of the temples to see that. I don't recognize any of them. <laughs> what about yeah. this, Andy? Up there, yeah, the, these are all these are all uh, the columns that that's the one of the reconstructed bits. I'm sure they've just piled them up so you they they, they pile them up so you can get a, a, an idea of what it looks like. And they've got that's the back of uh, I think the, the one that they think might be Apollo's temple. So, yeah. So it's got the columns all the way around, all four sides as well. So there would have been no, a on, the, on, on the reconstruction. Yeah, it would have been really quite a spectacular place at one time, I think. Uh, right, let's see. Uh, you can see in the background in that middle one there was where you could see it. It's a, an amphitheater like all the kind of Roman stroke Greek amphitheaters. So. There. Yeah. Yeah. 
now it carved into the bedrock most of that which wow. was really interesting just apart from one end which is that end there with the rubble in sticking out which isn't oh. very well constructed for some bizarre reason but it's not great there's no grass there now they've excavated down into the the lower levels and you can actually see the um the the carvings on the seats uh that you see that middle level there's a like a, a wider footpath around the middle there a, uh, there are post holes all the way around there that they had a kind of a, a sunshade on it. And they, they reckon that the lower seats actually had vellum on them to make them more comfortable for the posh yeah. people. Well, they'd get hot, wouldn't they? Well, they're stone. So I don't know. Would they? They're like, kind of yeah. like white marble. So but we'll get hot in the summer. Possibly. Yeah. But this, so but that central area has been excavated. Or part of it, they have a bit, uh, bit too hot now for doing work like that. So. Oh, I, I, and there, Andy. Yeah. And they've just carved those out of the rock. That's but... not the same temple. That's another one. Oh, oh another, right, yeah, sorry. sorry amphitheatre. Sorry, I just didn't recognise that. Is, is, no, you that, that, that? No, that might be, yes. Wait, you can walk through that, which is great. And the, the stone underneath the archway there is fabulously polished with people's foot, you know, foot treads. I think. So you're thinking you're just walking in where thousands of millions, or millions of people must have walked over the years now. Yeah. It's amazing oh. how archways always seem to survive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that one has. The other one on the other side is not so good. And it's got some really nice relief carvings on the top above it, the other side, um, of, mm. you know, various people. But, um, <clears throat> so, and and it's that, that theatre that theater is actually built on uh, an, uh, an earlier necropolis, which is about two or three years ago. So on the other side, there are a few tombs. And up on the top, mm. there are the remains of a few tombs as well. So, but, uh, is it Greek? Uh, well, that's kind of Greek style, the the, the theatre, but uh, Lycian's earlier than Greek, so yes. Uh, well, well, when it went, uh, well, obviously the civilization moved through to Greece, um, um, Hellenistic Greece, didn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. They yeah. kind of amalgamated. They did it. It they kind of make out that they didn't actually take over, but they did join, um, and they were given autonomy, um, uh, even in the Roman times, uh, kind of under the control of uh, whoever was in Rhodes at the time, so. In Rhodes? Rhodes, as in the oh, island, the yeah. Greek island of Rhodes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. seemed to have been the centre for that that period oh. then. Um, and what's, what's this temp you're on about with, with pillars? Oh, the, no. No, well, that, yeah, that's what they look like. Yeah, that's a reconstruction. Model. Yeah. Mm. So the, the the one you saw the one with the constructed ones is the left hand one the back mm. of it. So oh, cool. Mm. Any, any, anyway, thank you for Andy. That's so far away from the Mesolithic period. We may as well just run away. Yeah, I think they go the early, again earliest stuff they found there only goes to Bronze Age. Uh, but <coughs> they, they don't seem to be all that bothered about the Bronze Age. So. No, no. Okay, I can go back. Uh, right, any Thank thanks you. for that, Andy. Okay, um, any news from you, David? No, oh, sorry, sorry. no. Who else, when you were, Andy? No, sorry, I was just saying thanks for the pictures. All oh, right, yeah, uh, that's a fiver, Andy. Oh, so, so, so you'll only have, so you'll have to pay fifty-five quid. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, five pounds of that can go towards the next tower. Yeah, I, I, I would I would like to say I would like to say that um, uh, wonderful Pete helped towards um, uh, the payment for the for the movement of the tower. The thing is, we I, I just I just like to say that um, back to what we said last week, um, if you set your mind to things, you can get things done. Um, but there's just. Um, I, 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 I would say looking back on it. That if we had that if we had a, had a film crew there, right, um, we wouldn't have been able to do it. If we'd have had press there, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, if we'd have had officials there, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, if we had health, health and safety, if we, uh, it, it, we just wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, the, the only way we were able to do it was we, we just we just thought right, we've got a window of two hours, um, and. Um, um, I was having kittens, but it, we did it, and, and that, that's the point. And the um, official people said, "Where's it gone?" Oh no, they, it was officially donated. They're not. They're not bothered. Okay. They don't. They, they don't care. 
not not Rody, missing. The, 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 <laughs> the, the cutting of it, etc., were close to the mark, but the ones that were doing the job were very careful and a burden of their own safety. Yeah, I know health and safety, yes, was being um, stretched, but those people were knew enough about the job they were doing to do it in a safe way. Good. Well, and, and, and actually, um, uh, actually, if you, you could have totally uh, misinterpreted what I said. So Pete, Pete is completely correct. Yeah. Uh, these these people have, the, the, you know, the, the main guy cutting it, he had the confidence and knowledge and understanding um, and experience. Mm -hmm. you, you could um, you could tell he was so experienced with with this type of stuff. Um, tell you, he knew precisely he, what he was doing. <clears throat> Yeah. No, he, he 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 not only knew what he was doing, he knew what he was doing. That's the yeah. point. And yeah. remember the HSE guidelines are guidelines. You know, oh, yeah. there's, a, there's yeah. a, a fair bit of latitude, you know. So well, yeah. Yeah. the trouble is if you take these some of the, the health and safety guidelines to the to yeah. the limit, then you wouldn't do anything. No, no you wouldn't. Well, we we manage a woodland here, you'd be be better off cutting yeah. the trees down, it'd be safer. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh you know, the yeah. Trap with the crane, but he yeah. supported it. Yeah. Initially, he supported it by the roof, and I was a bit worried about that. Yeah. But then they changed that and supported the entire yeah. uh, uh, house at the top yeah. from underneath. Yeah. And idea. that made it safe, and it was yeah. safe for the men to work on there. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Who come up with the idea of supporting it by the roof, but but I, I changed that around, and uh, yeah, and obviously I, that, that's the that's the only thing I did. No, that's good. That's Ooh. that's important because you don't know how well it's attached. So no, that's, that's, yeah. that 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 was the only that was the only contribution mm -hmm. I made. I said, right, you're not doing it that way. You, uh, it was like some grumbles, and I said, right, put the straps underneath. That's mm -hmm. the only contribution I made. Other than that, it, it was them. That was a good call. Um, good call. That was the, that was the only call I made, and I, I think I said to Peter, I said, I said, we're just going to have to let them do this. Uh, mm -hmm. But there was just that one time. The, that was the only contribution I made. So that was a good call. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I knew. Um, I, I did know that much. So um, and that that was all I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So um, well what I, what I want to do is um, yes, we we we've we we've we've been chatting for a while now. I wanted to do a topic that I was meant to do last week and then a week before, and, and we've just been so busy. Um, I, I want us to look at um, some sets of human remains um, in Ireland, and I would like to look at the um, cheddar human remains, and I would like to compare them. However, the problem is because I've gone into so much detail with this topic, we we we've only managed to do um, we've only managed to do the one in Ireland. Now, if I do the cheddar one as well, then um, the ones are oh, don't don't worry we're, we're, we're just i'm just trying to get this done um and i want to get this done because it, it, there's some really good stuff so um what we're going to do we're going to screen share straight away and we're going to go um there um and uh i i was in a pub the other day and somebody said um Oh, hang on a minute. I've forgotten what I was going to say. Um, anyway, let's just cack on with this. Um, well, okay. Oh, let's get the right image for a start. Let's get the right image. Because what, what I've got, I've got, a, I've got a scientific paper, actually. And the way, the one thing about this scientific paper, you can actually see this. It's a pretty good one. Are you seeing this on your screen? Yeah. Yeah. Now that 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 adds there that that's key that that that's what we're going to look at a little bit, um, and I just I I just thought well you know this is very important as well. It, what what this is it, it's a um, um it, it it's it's what we what we do in what we do in archaeology at a conference, uh, and we 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 put these on boards and and we basically say read what's on there so it's ideal for us, so. One th one thing I'm going to put across is that this whole presentation today, uh, if we don't go on to Cheddar Man, is based upon that, some cremated human remains, right? 
so I'm going to I'm going to take myself out the box, and I'm going to say that finding cremated human remains in the Mesolithic period is is so amazing, right? Am I am I right in thinking none of you have heard this lecture yet? We haven't. No. No. <clears throat> no. I mean, I'm just. The thing is, I've actually done the lecture twice, right? And I'm only teaching one other class. Well, anyway, I, I, I don't know why that is. <clears throat> anyway, um, the point is, finding cremated human remains in the Mesolithic period um, is just so significant. It is, is, is way up there significant. And, and right, this is a tick box. To get temperatures to heat up human remains uh, um, to the degree that the bones burn um, is incredibly skilled. So I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if we, to, to cremate a set of human remains, uh, you need a stack of timber, which is dry timber, which is between one and a half and two meters in height. The stack of timber needs to be roughly about three by three meters, right? You've also got to put brushwood between the timber. You've also got to have a body that's my build, right? Um, nobody over my build. And, and you've also got to have um, the ability to set fire to that pyre. Um, and hoping that you've used in the right wood. And even then, you're gonna end up with bits of big bone, which, which haven't been consumed by the fire. However, you also have to prepare the landscape when you're burning the set of human remains. You've got to have a pit for the little bits of human remains to fall into. So to get sets of human remains like this in a Mesolithic context, more or less powdered bits of bone, this takes incredible skill. Uh, you, you think about Ireland, where these human remains come from, you think about Ireland, and there's two sets of human remains from this site. It's, it's along the River Shannon. And up until that point, we had no idea, we had no understanding or where with all to even think that people in the Mesolithic period, let alone in most of the Neolithic period, were capable of burning human remains. And they clearly were. Um, so what I need to do, right, and, and again, go back there. I'm, I'm going to sort of look there and I'm gonna show you where we're going. Here we go. It's, uh, it's, a, it's called, a site called uh, Hermit. Hang on a minute. Oh, that, that, that scale on those uh, ground remains, was that one centimetre? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So they're, 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 they're very small. They're, they're, they're very, very small, right? Um, and if we go here, that's where we're looking at the site, a site uh, along the River Shannon. And the site was found by complete accident. And there's an axe as well, which is associated with it. And the burial is really, really interesting. And to be honest with you, I, I thought I was going to rush this tonight. And I don't think I want to, because I want to, I want you to go away with a little bit of an experience in regards to this site. And and we, we the, a few weeks ago, we looked at the archaeology of Ireland, and it was so it was so quick. I think we did it in ten minutes, and which wasn't fair. It was at the end of a lecture, and I I, I just thought I, I've not done it justice. And here is where we we give Irish archaeology some justice. Now, Andy made a point earlier on that. We find archaeology to be boring or um, uninteresting uh, if the archaeologists deem it to be so. So, in other words, 
Bronze Age archaeology, where Andy was, nobody really cares. The early origins of Ireland, I, I do believe, and this is a this statement is flawed. I do believe Irish, the studies of Irish archaeology are probably a hundred years behind the study of our prehistoric archaeology. Am I right? Am I wrong there? I am probably wrong. But I wanted to say that to give a bit of impact. Because what we do find is that archaeologists in the north and archaeologists in the south, some, not all like myself, some want to justify that there's always been a division between Northern Ireland and in the ones in the South, there's always been a division between South and the North, which, which is a, a flawed analogy. Now, we, we, we can think that everything that I say now um, is going to be based upon what I feel rather than what some other archeologists feel that Ireland may have been belonged to the may may have been connected to mainland Britain many many years before I'm even saying right um, and then the land bridge was lost um, 10 15 20 thousand years ago some believe that Ireland was never part of mainland Britain but then again that could be a political statement um, some people in southern Ireland don't believe that Northern Ireland was ever connected to mainland Britain you see you're getting into politics there but for me i'm i'm out of politics here I, I, I don't really care about the protestant and the catholic cause all i all i'm interested in is the archaeology so and and i believe that ireland um when and if it and whatever um the last possible link that we've got between northern ireland and mainland let's just not use northern ireland but it's in the north of the island the last Giant time Ireland, Causeway surely is a connection. Yeah, all that, which is in the north, Peter. Yeah. Right. Um, so 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 the link between Ireland and mainland Britain was lost um, about between seven, eight, and nine thousand years ago. So that's that's really significant. And the reason why that's really significant is the following statement: the earliest recorded inhabitants of Ireland date back to the Mesolithic period arriving by at least 10,000 years ago and crossing the sea in small boats or stroke land bridge. However, somebody, one of my, one of my students, one of my gang um, on a Thursday evening now, and he's from Ireland and he said, actually, look at this. We've got evidence of people living in Ireland thousands of years before what I'm saying. Now that's, I would agree. I, I would agree with that statement because the technology to create human uh, remains doesn't occur overnight. And it's so blinking significant. Those footprints were significant, if you remember. So what, what, what we find is that, you know, we've got, we're going to put this little chart up there. I like this little chart here. We're just going to leave that there. It's totally out of context, but it's fine. You've got something to read there as well. So in 2001, Ireland's oldest recorded burial site was discovered at Hermitage Castle Canal on the river, alongside the uh, River Shannon, overlooking the River Shannon. So there we go again. Right. Um, and one other thing, I know, I, I know I'm blithering back and forth. Uh, they, they've got lots of really nice objects being found around Ireland as well. So before we go any further, up until this excavation at this site, uh, where, where the star is, at the Hermitage site, Castle Connell, before, before the excavation there in 2001, look at the number of Mesolithic sites that we, some of them are since 2001, but look at all the Mesolithic sites. There's quite a few there, right? There's quite a lot. But in density, probably not as far, not as much as if you want to sort of plug it into other bits of mainland Britain. But that's a some significant number of sites. So uh, Limerick County Council, in advance of a pipe laying scheme, had an archaeological unit on board called Aegis Archaeology, who were contracted for four weeks to excavate at the site. Um, and they were they they looked over an area of 4,400 square meters. 
um, along the stretch of the River Shannon, where a pipe laying uh, scheme was being operated. Um, and it revealed that this area had been used in places over a long period of time, given a rare glimpse of how um, um, open brackets, closed brackets, hunter gatherers used natural materials from their locality. The reason why we're still calling them hunter gatherers is we're struggling to find their settlement sites. But in the same vein that we were trying to find settlement sites before Star Car in Yorkshire and Hoyk in Northumberland, uh, Boulder Cliff um, in the Solent. Um, we used to think that they were all hunting together, but now we're starting to find their settlement sites. It was a, it was a surprise discovery uh, that they got objects from Mesolithic period. Now, I would interject that Irish archaeology is based upon, mainly based upon um, developer pays rather than we've got a load of money, we're going to spend it. That's not how archaeology works in Ireland. Um, it's mainly funded by the developer. So the developer funds the archaeological work, stuff is found. If the developer doesn't fund the, fund the archaeological work, it's not found. So they, they found these two cremated sets of human remains from the Mesolithic period over 10,000 years ago. Further discoveries included um, other human remains and charcoal polished stone axe known as an ads, ads type, ads, ads, the definition of an ads could be that it could be used as a plow and not only used to cut down a tree. Um, it's, it's sort of, you could use an ads for lots of different things. And I believe it's actually a plow tool rather than my notes saying it's an axe because they actually say that it can't be an axe. What is it? Is it for cutting out of a boat? Because if we sort of look uh, and we look there, that's along the edge. Right, so there's these serrated marks on the edge of this amazing axe, uh, and and there, there's there's our beautiful axe there. Is that going to come up? Right, okay. So let me do it. Oh, there we go. And there's our ads axe. You can get an idea. It's quite a big one actually. It's it's um, it's twenty centimeters. Actually, it's just over twenty centimeters actually. So. It, it, if you if you hafted this, if you put this, um, if you put a shaft on it on the right hand end, right, that's one big bloody axe, right? Now, or if you hafted it, um, you could somehow drag this across the land and use it as a plowshare. Well, whatever, whatever, whatever it's being used for, it's it's a really important object because of the way it's constructed and the way it's moved. So this site. This, this, we're, we're only doing the introduction about this site so far. So site of Hermitage is located um, in a classical landscape, a ridge of high ground overlooking a river, which could be strategic for fishing. But remember that River Shannon was not the River Shannon as it is today. It would have been a trickle. I think when they're saying classic location, it's an upland area. Now it's sort of in, it's more or less in lowland areas now but when we start to think about the analogy of the mesolithic period we're thinking about lots of sites in upland areas areas where the trees would have gone first or maybe not uh mesolithic Mes mesolithic mesolithic people at hermitage interacted with nature by using local wood and stone and the local landscape. Now, the one thing that I need to correct this thing that we, we always think about the Mesolithic period as being a period when they're using wood, when in fact, lots of stone is being used as we saw with the example, um, was it the Formby site where they were excavating and they actually, uh, near the Formby site, wasn't it? Uh, up above Mersey site, where they, they, where they were excavating and they actually found that stone was being used for drainage and stuff. So. So not only stone, we see in stone used for axes and sort of um, microliths and so on. Stone is being used in some form in construction. So we you can't always think about this. that. Yeah, it's go on, an go. ideal uh, ferro forming tool for planting. Yes, it is. The other end. The, 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 uh, the right hand end. You see the shape of it with a uh, almost in a yeah. triangular shape. Yeah, yeah. And that would be used and dragged towards the uh, person to form a furrow for planting. And why not? I'm just going to say, why not, Pete? It could be it could be a multiple tool. It could be like yeah, a Swiss Army yeah. knife. 
Well, why not? Let, let's just let's just. Well, the, I, the thing is, right? The thing is, we we've we do have evidence of the fact that um, you know they they're eating wild stuff as well, they're wild grains mm -hmm. and stuff. So you know, in other parts, in other sites as well. So it's not it's not going to be unknown. Although the excavation did not yield evidence um, to show that the river was used extensively, but what we do have, it, it's going to be linked nearby. So one of the things that we've got is we've got the, back to this, we've got two well-preserved cremations uh, dating to the early Mesolithic period, um, pit A and pit B. The pit A cremation um, is particularly, uh, particularly illustrates a level of knowledge sophistication and ritual or if we cut ritual um connection so if we if we sort of go back there, there's 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 our little there's our axe we're going to go through all this anyway so if we go there again and we sort of it's, it's a it's a great piece this i absolutely love it um and there it is that that's what we're talking about that that's where the evidence is so where the um oh hang on a minute where are we? Oh, so I've gone pot, pot a minute. That's what I wanted. Uh, where, where we've got the measuring pole there, and actually that's quite a deep pit. It's 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 one and a half meters deep. Right, so it's actually quite a deep pit um, for burial. So, and interesting enough, um, th this is this this again is something that. That the shows a level of understanding and connected connect, connectedness, and burials, any type of burials from the Mesolithic period are rare. But we're actually coming across them more and more. So we looked a few weeks ago. Was it last week or the week before? We looked at a site in Croatia, um, Portugal, and Italy, where we're actually getting human remains being um, given um, their last rites. People given, being given the last rites of the Mesolithic period. So, so what we are starting to find is that the Mesolithic period is is a wonderful point in time that that we're actually starting to um, we're actually starting to gather some more and more information. So the polished axe, which is the green thing in there, suggests that the burial person was important and of high status. Now, then again, it could have been just a normal person. Uh, the post there indicates that uh, the person wants to be remembered. It's a totem pole. Yes, that's used a totem pole. We use that in the Neolithic period. Uh, the Mesolithic finds at Hermitage are internationally significant, being amongst the earliest cremated burials in Europe. Well, actually, some of the first on the planet that, that we know about. So there we go. So what I want us to do is I want us to go to... Again, I'm not exactly sure whether whether we will um, get through all this today, but where's the rush? May as well do it right. Uh, there's our axe. Good. So, so what, what, what I'm going to do here is we're going to examine the, the axe and sort of, it's, it's, classed, as, it's classed as an ad and um, rather, okay, it's a tool, right? So let's just, Look at it as a tool. Forget what poor Pete said. Forget what the most of my notes say. Forget what I'm going to say. It's an object that is very special to the people that created it. And I know it's only one object of its type, but there would have been many of these at one point. So obviously finding this in burial pit A, uh, this is an adds an axe, very similar tools anyway, uh, both for chopping mo motions or both for movement. Um, of wood or soil or whatever. Um, so obviously it would have been hafted on the right-hand side. So that would have been mounted on the right-hand side. Um, from its form, we know that this object functioned as an adze rather than an axe, right? So um, they're talking about this is the, 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 the shaft, the, the haft is bit there on the right hand side uh, is attached. Um, axes have a blade which is aligned with the handle whilst adzids are at an angle. So an adz is at an angle rather than, so that's a diagonal from the, the right hand side rather than um, sort of um, um, an, 
sort of rather than uh, being mounted as an axe. So that's the difference between how this could have been mounted. And they, they do actually believe that they, they, could, they could see there's evidence on it, micro evidence to see that it was actually mounted uh, because they, they've got some kind of faint traces um, that um, of, of some kind of rope material being used. But that's later on. It is not possible to di di it is not possible to identify the exact source of what this is, but it's not a normal stone. It's shale. It's quite soft. <laughs> when I say it's quite soft, Pete knows uh, if you say, say igneous or a metamorphic rock, it's very hard. But shale, like Blue John, which comes up from Yorkshire Way, um, and shale down the Isle of Wight because there's very famous shale down there is quite hard, but nevertheless it's quite soft compared with something like um, the Penman Meyer Axe Factory um, and the Dale uh, factories um, up in Cumbria. So, so when 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 I when I was presenting this on Thursday, one of the members of the group and, I, and I'm going to give him a name, Bill. He said, he said, hang on a minute, Carl, that, that's definitely not shale. And I said, look, Bill, it's shale. Uh, it looks too hard to be shale. But I then said to Bill, I said, look, um, we've not identified the precise shale it is, but nevertheless, Bill, it's going to be quite soft. And we know it's quite soft because of the, the rest of the story. So the shale could have come locally on another part of Ireland. Now, I know one of you guys, it was Drina. Right, let's get this right. One of you tell me whether it was Drina or Margaret. One of you said two weeks ago that why are we obsessed with, why are we always obsessed with trade? Why can't they just have carried these around with them and just use them themselves? Which one of you said that? It wasn't me. Uh, it's you, Margaret. Well done. You get the credit, Margaret. Well done, Margaret, on that one. One for you again. So, um, but the thing is, we, we are obsessed with we are obsessed with trade. And I think when, uh, well, I'm not so much, but, I, but I've fallen into a trap. When we did staff in Ireland off the Isle of Skye, I basically mentioned um, <coughs> that they were, that this the, the, the material at Skye had, was still the same material as being found on the, on the island, uh, on, on the Isle of Rum. Um, and I immediately jumped and said, this is evidence of trade. But then again, is it evidence of trade or is it just evidence of people moving around? Why does it always need to be about trade? That's the really important point. Leave that it there. was Trina you... that said that. It wasn't me. I don't think I was here. Yeah, oh, no, it was uh... Anne. It was Anne. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to Anne, Margaret. <laughs> it wasn't me anyway. It's, Anne. it's Anne's fault. Uh, well done, Anne. Uh, during the Mesolithic period, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, pe people were collecting and possibly trading, or they were, were, or they were moving with these objects, or some of them could have actually be, been moved by by glaciation. So one one of the, one of the interesting things they they're calling it ads. We'll use the word ads rather than an axe with the way it's been mounted, right? So the, the um, so obviously. Um, we, we, I don't want to go into a full lecture with with axes and adzes because we would have gained them if, if we. Um, but ov obviously, what we're going to do is re they reproduced one of these, right, using a similar material to the shale, right. And there's some interesting, there's some interesting things I'm going to say about this, right. One, the person reproducing it, I would like to know if they if they if they've created hundreds of these, right? If it's somebody, uh, it's a one-off, right? Then obviously the times that I'm gonna give you don't illustrate the true time it would have been created in the past. Obviously somebody skilled, there you go. Don't have that information. But I'm gonna pre presume it. somebody's created this, a reproduction, knew what they were doing. Now, Phil Harding of Time Team is able to create something like this, but he is highly skilled. <laughs> probably as much skill as somebody that was in this period anyway. So let's presume it, if the reproduction was created with somebody with skill. It took six hours to make. Now, the interesting point is the, the, the left-hand side of this, the edge, the cutting edge, it said uh, that was napped 
for up to 15 minutes of the six hours it was used to make to give it to give it an edge but i'm going to say to give it an edge um all you need is a knot in a bit of wood and the whole edge is gone right therefore is it is is it used for plowing and then somebody said, well, let's just not have it used as plowing. Let's just have it not used for cutting down trees. Let's have it as a ceremonial thing. And I'm thinking, why does it always go down to ceremony? Shut up. So um, and the whole thing would have been ground using a red sandstone on a quartzite or, or something igneous or metamorphic, something harder than the shale. That's why I'm saying it's not the hardest material in the world. And to be ground down with red sandstone tells me that it's, it's not very heat. It's not very hard, basically. So I'm going to go with all that. And they're saying that by reproducing it to get the same effect as that, they, they, they had to use the whole two hours of the six hours of polishing with either coarse sandstone or leather uh, and water, ash or animal fat as a lubricant. Right? <laughs> And actually, I, I know even I know a better thing that you could do, use as a lubricant. You could use um, brain material. But anyway, let's move on. Um, or, or you ah, actually you could use you could use seaweed. But yeah, you, but this is near the coast. Let's use seaweed. Forget the animal fat. Let's just use seaweed because seaweed, uh, bladderwrack, for example, is really highly lubric lub lubricating, and you can move stone with with that. Anyway, so um, curiously, whoever made the ads appears to have hurried the final stages of its manufacture, really, because the, because despite taking care to grind and polish most of the surface to a very high finish, making sure to remove all signs of flaking and any imperfections, some flake scars can still be seen along one edge. Right. Not sure which edge. Um, even though it was not completely polished, this ad represents one of the earliest known examples of a polished stone axe from a secure context in Europe. So another you know, secure context is it's been found in the ground. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to go on to this image. The use in, its, in itself would cause it to be smoothed. Yes. The more it was yes. used, the smoother it would be. But used for what exactly? So oh, yes. not for not. Not for cutting down trees, Pete. I've, I've gone through, <laughs> no, no, I don't I've think it was used for cutting down trees. I think it was made to furrow the ground and planting. Is that because I've said it, Pete? Are you just following me or what? Would you no, do, 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 no, that's the shape okay. of it. Yeah, that's the shape of it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, do, you know, do you know? Do you know what we should do next week? I don't. We haven't got time this week. I'm, I'm going to stick a post-it down. I'm going to stick a post-it down, and I'm going to say. Um, I want to look at ads next week as a little bit of a um, agricultural sideline. Um, and the one, the one who would have loved this is that chap that passed away recently. Uh, the one that loved agriculture, whatever his name, Colonel. That was it, Bob. Anyway, um, he would have loved that. So we're, we're going to look at ads. Is just a few frames on ads and axes next week to tie in. Because we, we need to see if me and Pete have got a point here. Everything everything's about this cut is everything is about this as a cutting tool, and this, uh, and the um, and, and what we're getting there, the the um, striated lines there on, on the on the cutting edge, right? Um, clear traces that it's been deliberately blunted, but you would get that if you're yeah. using it as a plow, yeah. um, coming across coming across resistance on the stones. Because that's exactly the same um, striated lines that you do find on stones in the ground that's been hit by a metal plow chair. So I want to turn that around. Anyway, microscopic analysis. You, this is, as you can see, this is fascinating. Uh, microscopic analysis, although we have no direct evidence for a haft, obviously where it's been hafted on the right hand end there, where it's been mounted, you're going to need to haft it if you're going to use it as a plowshare anyway, but, but forget that. You can actually you can actually use it in the ground. Yeah, to be honest with you, my experience, when I haven't got a... Uh, uh, I, I'm going to go on to two bits here. When I, when I haven't got a... a, um, a met, when I haven't got a trowel or something nearby, and I'm digging a hole in the ground here, and I'm putting a tree or something in there, and I just don't find a tool around, I use a bit of stone, right? 
And uh, not going into too much detail with what I'm about to say next, when I'm um, assisting people with um, potions, um, I would use a stone to dig a hole in the ground, right? Don't go into what I've just said. But, but if there's nothing available, you're going to use stone. So going back to this, although we have no direct evidence for it being mounted, indirect evidence from microscopic analysis of the added surface using a technique called microware analysis, which is the same thing that you would use to analyze if there's been, um, if you're trying to find carvings on the stone, um, trying to find the indentations and you've got stress marks and all the rest of it, showed that the ads was probably hafted with wood and plant bindings. Interesting. So, so they, they managed to pick that up on, 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 the, on the far end from this edge here. Specialists were also able to identify traces, um, different types of polish edge. So in other words, they, they were finding different ways this was being treated. On the ads' surface, that had resulted from it being used to chop wood, they say, though only for a very short duration of time. Ah, right. Okay. So there was some indication that it may have been used um, to cut wood, but very for a very short period of time. So that goes back to what I said earlier on. Forget what Pete said, forget what I said, forget whatever. It could have been a multi-tool. And why not, right? Why not? Um, I let, let's just look at this another way. Um, when I've buried animals here, we've got we got a burial ground here with 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 everything from a badger all the way down to um, an oxalotl buried here on a burial ground that we've got here. Right. So so I, I, I might use a, um, a stone tool to dig in the ground for something like a frog or a toad. Right. And then I might write on that stone. Um, a toad is buried here. So that's had got a dual use. You, you're thinking, what the hell? But but I, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to give you I try to give you perspectives. Considering the time and effort spent making such a well-crafted object, was it well-crafted to them? Big question mark. Yes, of course it's well-crafted. But then again, I'm sure all of us would be proud of a Sunday lunch that we've made. It's well-made. More than what would have been required for it to function efficiently as an ad. So, right, the short duration of its use is intriguing. Right, the problem is that they're, they're presuming that its use as an axe uh, is the be all and end all. We're saying it's not, right? We're saying it's got a dual use. So that would explain the lines here, which are explained in a different way. It is possible that the ads was made for the burial rite, perhaps used to cut the tree. There's no way this is gonna cut down a tree. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not, no, no way. Absolutely no way on this planet. Right, because if you if you okay, if we want to look at um, let, let's I, I'm I'm over analyzing this, but but this is what you pay me to do. Um, I want to I want to go back to this image, right? So we can presume that the post is. Are we going to go with a post about um, God? <laughs> if we go with the I I I I'm not from that scale. I'm saying that the post hole. Is, is is 50 centimeters. No, I, I, I'm gonna go with, okay, I'm just gonna go with 30, right? So 30 centimeters is quite a chunky post, right? You, you want me to say 50, don't you? I, I can't, I'm from that, it's a lot more than 30, but 30 centimeters diameter, right? You're not gonna be able to cut, I'm sorry, you're not gonna be able to cut that down with with this, With, with you're not gonna be able to do it, I'm sorry. You, you can you can anyone want to jump in and argue with me on this one? I, I'm I'm happy. You you can give give me how you it, can cut a tree down with this, please. You Carl, you wouldn't you wouldn't cut a tree down with an adze. You cut it down with an axe, but not an yeah. adze. An adze is meant to, to scoop. It's a perpendicular movement. It's for shaping and and you know stripping stuff down. So it might have been used for shaping the end. But uh, if you're going to cut a piece down, you cut it down with an axe. So. This, 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 Andy, this is why we need to do ads as an axis because yeah. you are you are completely correct. Very you are complete. Yeah. yeah, because because of the angle, it's gonna. You, yeah. You, it's, yeah. It's like it, nothing. Right, I, okay. I totally accept the the multi tool idea, but not for cutting a tree down. No. Well, I, I to be honest with you, um, what I, however you want to look at this, right? This this is just not the tool you're going to use to cut down a tree. 
Well, okay, Andy, just forget about the ads bit, right? Just make it into an axe, right? You're not, it's, it's just, hard enough, it's, it? it's not hard enough. No. It's yeah, not hard it's, enough. It's difficult because you don't know how hard the shale is. So, yeah, because you do get harder shales, but you're, you're right. It, it's traditionally a much softer and splits very easy. It's not one I would choose, but that, that might be a really hard shale. Um, who knows? Oh, it may be, it may be the only used it for that burial for some reason, but it's like you said, they, they certainly wouldn't have cut the tree down with it. That would be silly. No, no. That would be silly. So, right. So, so we're, we're sort of coming to something here, which, which is, which, which is where, it, yeah, you can now, you can now see why, I, why I didn't even manage. We didn't even go into this detail on, on mm. uh, Thursday, to be honest with you. So, uh, right. Okay. So, um, so what they're saying here, they're saying that if it was used to cut down the tree, um, it could no longer function to do anything else because it's done its job. Um, and it, you would have had to have resharpened it so many times to cut down the tree. You wouldn't have had much of a tool left if it was used. Right. So and, and it's quite a big, chunky, chunky piece as well. So what what they're saying, okay, what what this this what this person's saying is what we have learned. We're gonna we're gonna read this out. We're gonna see what we can learn. Blending of stone axe, axes and adzes and, and, and stone tools in general in burial uh, is known from other periods in across the continent. Not typically for anybody like this. For later prehistory, this act of blunting. Um, adzes, axes, and even swords in the Bronze Age, for example, um, grave goods is seen as a, sim a highly symbolic gesture. It is likely that whoever blunted the ads was also making a symbolic statement. But I'm, I'm actually, what we're presuming is it was deliberately blunted. Um, th this, this is the problem. We're, we're, we're actually, we're actually going down the rabbit hole of, of presuming that, that it's been deliberately blunted for the purpose of burial, right? Um, and I'm going to basically say, well. Um, Anyway, let, let's just let's just see what they say. Researchers have suggested that it's the death of the ads through blunting may have also represented the death of the individual it accompanied into the ground. Right. So um, if I if I want to, as an analogy, uh, where I work in New Key, they, there's there's a fence there and there's padlocks on it with people's names um, and, and people people get the padlock and shut the key away. That means that you can no longer use the padlock. The padlock is dead, like the relationship. Yeah. So, so there. I it's thought it dead. was to lock the the relationship. Not on the one. Not on some of the ones I've read. <laughs> well, okay. no, Peter. Peter, again, you, you, you've just you, you see what we did there. It's my interpretation. What you've just said is completely correct. On some padlocks, Pete, mm -hmm. you are okay. right, Pete. On some padlock, it's. It, it, I, I've read one padlock. It said, um, "You know, this is the end of our relationship." We're from the keel away, and then you've got. I think there was one of the padlocks saying, um, "I put this padlock on you because somebody has died," right? And I think in Pete that if I'd read some of the other ones, because what I've done, I've taken two padlocks in my head. If I, I, I do believe you're right, Pete, that some of the other ones. I, I'm going to say you're right, Pete. So, but what we are doing, in, in other words, we, we're seeing. Um, different ways of looking at these objects, which which we've got to do, to try and understand them, to try and understand their the, the, these these are what they're saying. Listen to this. People tend to think of Mesolithic hunter gatherers, yeah, scrub that, uh, as lacking complex belief systems, poppycock and customs, poppycock. Now, as the notes tell me, increasingly, however, the archaeological evidence is suggesting. Otherwise, using different scientific techniques to identify the special use and treatment of the hermitage ads as part of the funerary rite has therefore helped to change perceptions of Irish hunter-gatherers and actually change the perspectives of, of who we are. Now, at that point, I need to say something else because <coughs> I, I, I've just remembered something else, but I think this is what I said it, right? So... Uh, yeah, what, 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 I've not explained this. When, when you're, when you're, like, when you're doing a lecture, right? Um, 
I, I don't I don't write any of my lectures down anymore because if I did, I wouldn't wouldn't be able to do it. Right. So what I do, I I, I store stuff in my head and, and then and somehow my 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 remembrance of, of this and, and, and this is as follows. Um, when when we we think of Ireland as being completely isolated um, and completely separate from mainland Britain. And I'm going to say yes. Huh? Right. But it was linked to the Britain. Yeah, but when it, when it became an island, right, when it became an island, it's now disconnected from mainland Britain. In the same vein, I lecture you guys and tell you that Britain is disconnected from Europe. Are, are you getting this? So, so we always argue that Britain is different from Europe because it's disconnected from Europe. Bloody Island is different from Britain because it's disconnected from, uh, you know, it's disconnected from us, right? And I'm also going to go as far as saying that maybe even the western coast of Ireland was completely different from the eastern coast because of the bloody trees and the bogs and all the other crap in the middle. Right. Which is the same thing that we'd say for mainland Britain. But the experience experience in mainland Britain is not that case, because what we do see is that we get we get big buildings being constructed on one side at Hoyk, which is um, six metres in diameter. And then we get them on the on the western coast above Merseyside. We, we see the site being six metres in diameter there as well. Right. In the Mesolithic period. I guess what guess what we we think from some indication, the sizes of some of the sites in Ireland are on the on the west coast, where this site is at Hermitage. Um, there's evidence that some of the buildings are six meters in diameter. And you're thinking, what? Yeah, but you've already you've just said that the people in Ireland are completely. Sometimes people's direction is the say on the same on the on the same track. Right. And what we mean by that, I'll, I'll give you a really stupid example. Second World War, um, um, it's believed by some experts that the Manhattan Project in 1944 was being developed completely in isolation from the, the, the Russian um, nuclear program and the German nuclear program. Right. And the British nuclear program. Right. We all thought that we would. But we were all developing at the same time. Um, some of you can argue, Carl, you, that's not true. But, and people were aware of this, but nobody knew that the Germans were developing um, nuclear capacity. Mm. Uh, we just thought that they may have been, right? Or maybe we didn't, right? Um, the point is, there was a reason. There was a reason. The war was the reason, right? So if if there was something going on across um, Britain and Ireland that was similar, people would develop and develop in the same way. They would develop six meter big houses because of a certain thing that was going on out there, not because there was any actual links between them, because there was no Internet and there was no whatever. So that's a really important point. Anyway, I've gone off. I've gone off on a little tangent, but that was really important because we're still talking about Ireland. This is about Irish Mesolithic. Right. So we now know that the Her Hermitage ads played a, a key part in what appears to have been a coordinated funerary rite. Right. We'll leave that there. I'm not going to comment on that. Involving social and temporal complexity. The word complex is, is important. But there's nothing here about the cremation yet. I've said that. With the ads probably commissioned whilst the individual is dying or upon their death. Um, crap. Let's just not go there. Because that's just taking it another direction. We're saying that the thing was created for the, for the person because the person is dying. Right. No, I, I, I can't do that. Is it, it's also saying that haste is evidence in, in the way it's created, or is it? If that's the case of the archaeologists, this begs the question, was there urgency to get this grave good <laughs> into the ground, right? Obviously, it's not perfect, right? Does it need to be perfect? Um leave that as a question don't need to answer it it is unlikely that the ad was the personal property of the deceased but was there such thing as property back then question mark in spite of the time and effort given to its making we'll agree with that though we'll agree that, that that's one thing that we can all agree on the amount of time and effort went into creating this shale object 
and it was used for something. We'll agree on that as well. So when we do axes and answers next week as a little thing, right? We can we can go back to that. Uh, this may have been um, this may have been the wood for the grave marker and the pile and uh, the pyre um, that this object may have been used for cutting, but we don't really know that. Uh, but there is one thing that I am going to say. I'm going to I'm going to take a punt. I'm going to take a punt. Andy likes me taking punts. I reckon um, that if they analyse the charcoal in that hole, they'd be able to understand exactly what tree was cut down. And therefore, they could try and understand with the reconstruction the ability to cut down that tree. And therefore, we'd get an answer. So we wouldn't have to be postulating on any of this. But I'm still for the fact that it would be very, very difficult. Do you know, do you know what? I, when I cut down... When I, when I cut down a, um, I didn't know, but I've told you this. When I cut down a larch tree, it was like um, March. It, it, it was it was it it was dead anyway. Right? I, I won't cut down a live tree. It was dead. But so when I cut down a larch tree, it was the the it was like thirty centimeters in diameter. So that's the one I'm saying for this. I used an iron axe. I'd never cut down a tree before. Right? Um, yeah, don't go there. Right. Um, but um, when when the um, I, it took me with an iron axe, it took me a good part of about an hour and a half to cut down this tree. And that's an iron axe. And uh, it, it did have it did have it was sharp when I started. By the end, it was blunt. Right. So try to cut down a, a, a tree uh, with an iron axe. But what I am going to say is that it still had a tapered blade on it, which should, uh, which I would say would be the same tapered blade that this would have created, this shale. It, this, this shale, no matter how hard you sharpen the shale, it would be nowhere near as sharp as my blunt axe. Do you see what I'm getting at? Or you could argue, Carl, you're talking crap, but not from my experience. So the blade or cutting edge, which is there, was facing down into the pit and therefore also the earth. So ending its life. I would agree on that. I, I actually agree. Because what you can see is facing downwards, right? So therefore that's the end of its life. So what we do find, it's facing down into the pit. Additionally, two um, flint microliths were found in this burial pit. So combined, this individual had a total of three grave offerings or at least uh, these are the artefacts that have survived. There may have been offerings given to the deceased made of organic material that have long since perished. Now, there are four parts to this lecture today. We've done one of them and I've spent a lot of time on it. Well, I, 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 I would like to be um, I would like to be finished um, just around just after half nine anyway. Um, so I'm going to try and see where we go with this next so what i'm going to do is i would like to whilst i get my notes up here i want somebody to talk to me andy talk to me a moment while i while i get this sorted out right there's some interesting things about that ads so that's clearly positioned in the pit there specifically mm -hmm. so it, it has some significance um and going back to the argument about um whether it was made specifically for it that might be why it's made of shale, so that it could be made quickly, um, and therefore, because it, it, it's you know it's a softer stone. If you'd made it out of granite, it would have been weeks, you know, um, and less practical. So maybe they chose shale to make it quickly, and it and it had more significance as part of the ceremony rather than an actual function. I mean, it may have been used for something, but I, I don't believe for one moment mm. you would use an ads to cut a tree down. It's pointless. It's not, that's not what they're designed for at all. Yeah, yeah I, I'd agree with that. Um, however, however, um, a lot of effort has gone into creating it. Well, is it six hours? That's in, you know, in a, it's by our time scale, that's a long time, but is it for theirs? You know, think about how long those uh, Langdale axes took to make. They took a lot longer than that. Mm. Well, so, more than a few hours. Yeah, Andy. Yeah. Bloody hell. What, what, so, what? You've got to, you've got to quarry the thing, Andy, right? You've got to rough it. Yeah. Uh, oh, forget it. I, yeah. I'm not even going to go so That's there. why shale is, you can do it quite quickly with shale because it's softer. And that's why, yeah, obviously it would blunt very quickly. So you could only use it 
like you say, with it, you, you wouldn't, I don't think you could chop a tree down with it because it'd be blunt in five minutes. So you're so, saying it was just for that one job, it was just something I, handy. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. Uh, hang, hang, hang on a minute. Hang, hang on, Andy. Haven't you answered another question here, right? Oh. So um, you, 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 you've just said it yourself. If, if um, Let's just think an expert creating this would have taken four hours. So yeah. if they'd have spent <clears> another 20 minutes, it would have been perfect. Uh, but yeah, yeah, possibly, you know. So then therefore, it, it obviously didn't need to be, did it? No. So. Uh, 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 that's the point. It didn't need to be perfect. So, so that's mm. the other thing. It didn't. And there was a reason why it wasn't perfect. Yeah. Or, or Andy, we, you and I have looked at it in a different, completely different way. Their yeah. idea of perfection is not our idea of perfection. Yeah. Okay. So, so Good say point. for example, um, let, let 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 let's pick on Margaret a minute. <clears throat> Margaret, you know you know the tins in your cupboard, right? Mm-hmm. And all the labels facing outwards, telling you what's on the uh, product, uh, what what's on your tins in your cupboard. Mm-hmm. They are. On my, uh, on my tins. It's, yeah, yeah, are they all facing outwards and you know what's no. not, what tin? No, right. I, I know what's in them, yeah. No, I, I, I know, that's not what I, that, I'm mm. not really interested in that. Um, oh, oh, you know, when you go into your cupboards, have you got all the beans there and have you got all the, uh, you know, is it all organized? In particular places, yeah. Right, yeah. but you haven't got the, all the labels facing outwards. No. Well, that's I'd, not perfect, have, is it? I'd have to, yeah. But, uh, but Margaret, oh, yeah. that's not perfect. It's, it's not for Andy, right? Yeah. So, 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 hang on, go, go back, go, go back to this, Margaret, right? So, you're happy with the way you've um, organised your tins in your cupboard? Yeah, I'm a bit lackadaisical, I suppose. No, hang on a bit. No, 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 no not interested in lackadaisical. Mm. That's okay for you, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it then. You've answered it yourself. Yeah. Uh, and Andy, Andy wants to have uh, all the labels uh, facing out, and he wants them in order, right? Okay, yep. but that's Andy, yep. right? So, oh my God, you don't, Andy, please. No, let's not go there. But anyway, the point is, the, the, the point is with all of this, uh, is that um, what, we've, what we've done, we've overdone the sense of perfection, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're putting our, <clears throat> I've got to be honest with you, right? If, if, I was, if I was given that ax now, I would say it was perfect. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So for me, it would have been a perfect axe, right? But to some other expert, it's not. It's it's like um, it's like somebody saying, "Oh, what we'll do? We'll we'll have um, we'll have we'll have one of uh, Van Gogh's um uh, self portraits." Somebody might say, "Oh, that's not very good. It's not perfect." Mm-hmm. As other people mm-hmm. saying, "It's perfect." It is in the sense of perception, and and the problem is we're mm-hmm. being too perceptive in our analysis. Oh, but by the way, the reason why I wanted a little break there was um, was because next next week we've got to start on the Doggerland, right? Um, and then we've got to. Um, I want to do a little bit of Mesolithic news in Wales. I want to do Doggerland too. Um, somebody's convinced me. I think it might be Andy to do the uh, Lunar Warren Field calendar object, uh, Mesolithic versus Neolithic, and we'll probably have to move on to Neolithic next. But that's gonna even that's a few bloody that's even that's about a month and a half away. Uh, oh, and also we we got to do part two of this as well, which is the Cheddar Cheddar Man. Mm. Anyway, oh God, <clears throat> right? Okay, so the next thing I want us to do go back to that go back to that map again, right? Go back go back there, right? So we got we got that there. So I'm gonna try and try and get through this a little bit now. So good. Right, so what we got, we so obviously um, what I'm going to say is that I'm going to use the terminology what this says, so it, it readdresses this. So, so archaeology in Ireland, we could say that the, the the first major identifiable period when we got human occupation in Ireland is in the Mesolithic period. Agreed that we got through that one, right? But it's not to discount that there, there weren't people already in Ireland before that, and I'm saying to develop the idea to cremate human remains. Right, away from this axe that we've looked at, would have been developed by people who had been at island for a long time, right? Because the skill, the skill to actually create human remains is found nowhere else. So maybe these were the first people to create human remains because they felt like it. We don't have to, we don't have to have waves of people moving across Europe thinking, oh, by the way, we're not going to create people, we're not going to do it, right? Oh, we're going to create people all of a sudden, and we're just going to know how to do it. No, it don't work like that. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. You know, the Industrial Revolution. 
it took hundreds of years for people to actually come up with the technology. Uh, the Bessemer um, furnaces that were needed in the Industrial Revolution, right, um, to actually get the iron to such a such a layer, level. Then we've got cast iron and all the rest of it. We've got steel and so on. It took hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, to develop that technology. To be able to burn human remains, I think, is the same thing. You could say, no, you're wrong, but please do. So what we've got, we so in other words, we, we do have evidence in Ireland, right, there is actually um, the remains of a butchered bear uh, in a cave in County Clare, right? Which is about 13,000 years old. In fact, we've got other evidence in Ireland, which is even older. Um, but surmountable, the first surmountable archaeological evidence of people living in Ireland is in the Mesolithic period. But then again, can't we say the same for the whole of Britain? Uh, anyway, move on. What it is, we don't have much Paleolithic evidence in Ireland because we don't have the same level of caves that we find on mainland Britain. But but the evidence is slowly coming. Um, we 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 think and we know that the the, the Mesolithic was still probably full, full swing about six thousand years ago. Mm. Their Mesolithic lasted longer, or did it? We don't really know because we're we we we're, get, we're getting that problem when we look at everything else. So, so what, what, what we've got, we, we've got other evidence from other parts of Ireland. The, the, these, these fish bones, for example, there you go. Uh, these actually come from an excavation in County Mayo. So we know they're very much into eating fish. So most hunting and most hunting and gathering groups in Ireland uh, have an intimate knowledge of their local environment, often embedded in complex understanding of the world. Well. I can't make a better statement than that. The archaeological record can only hint at this, but we do see that this is building. Belief systems, religion, forget about all that. Let's just think about survival. Uh, and we've got reconstructions. In other words, we, we've started reconstructing houses in Ireland before most of this evidence has actually come to us. So moving through the landscape, Mesolithic groups most likely moved through the landscape on a seasonal basis, really? Did they, were they mobile? Were they, well, we don't really have the settlements. We used to think that about mainland Britain that they moved around a lot, right? But we started to find deliberate sets of buildings across the whole of Britain. Well, bits of Britain. But we could actually say, for example, that, um, that what, what we do find is that there was a, probably a mixture of hunter-gatherers, people who were sedentary based in one area. Um, and, and people who did both, like mm. is suggested at Scar Cup. But we do find at a site known as Mount Sandal in mm. Londonderry in Ireland that we do actually have buildings that are six metres in diameter. Bloody hell. Actually, do you know what? The building that I'm building, right, is not six metres in diameter, but it's bloody huge. Now, these people are, I, I've got all modern materials. You know, um, well, no, I haven't. I've, 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 the, the only power tool I have on is, is a borrowed power drill. Uh, and I've actually got a uh, cordless um, um, a sort of disc cutter, which I hardly ever use anyway. But the fact of the matter is, these people were capable of things that I could only dream of, dream of in, in buildings wise. We, we've got constructed platforms at the edge of lakes, and we've got evidence of, of, of people. Um, catching fish and all sorts of things and we've got massive evidence of there we go fish fish bones like peter's peter's had some intercourse with these fish bones when we went to the island of sanday uh, peter and i were looking at the a cliffside in sanday and we're seeing all these bones which which went all the way from the mesolithic neolithic period didn't we pete they were everywhere remember that pete is everyone there yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said, What's happened to Pete? He hasn't fallen asleep, have he? Oh, I was muted. Sorry. Yeah. You can remember that, can't you, Pete? Layers of all these fish bones and stuff. You did all see lots of fish bones, yes. Yeah. And that, well, that was from some of that was probably from this period or probably a bit later. But anyway, so an archaeological, so the archaeology is described as a hunter gatherers. The archaeological record for the Mesolithic period is constrained by archaeological preservation and our inability to actually have been able to study this to the degree that we actually see the study if in, in regards to the Roman period. Right. So, um, do you know, um, I, I need to repeat something that I said last week to some of you who didn't hear it, 
But Claire, at the end of the lecture, she said, oh, I, I don't find this, this period very interesting at all. I find it boring. And I think one of you said, oh, that's a shame. Oh, but I did find what you discussed today interesting. Mm -hmm. I thought, OK, thanks for that, Claire. You, you've really helped me there. But I think Claire was talking about something that was opposed to what I'm about to say. And this isn't having a go at Claire at all. She's got a right to her opinion, I, and I appreciate it. But um, what, one, one thing is, for example, the people find the Roman period totally boring. Uh, um, I find, I, I'm going to say it, I find, um, I find the medieval period tedious and <coughs> boring. Right, I bloody do. Mm. And the reason why um, we don't go into the medieval period and the Roman period in as much detail as as these periods right but we go into the viking period with massive with massive interpretation which is a bit strange because when we look at say say like copper gate and we 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 go to uh oh god i'm on what's the bloody hell name of it the, the jorvik viking center well they've gone into so much bloody detail you can't be not interested in jorvik right you've seen it you've been there you've been it yeah right so the point is is that because we go into these peri this period in so much detail, I find this massively fascinating. I, I really do. <clears throat> and when people say, what's your specialist period? I go, oh, Roman. Yeah, prehistory. Yeah, but you've written books about the Romans. Yeah, but I've not done, I've not gone into as much detail by even far. Do you know what? If I, um, if I wrote a book on the Romans, right, and I just looked at a Roman fort and I went into as much detail as I do with, with this, right, we'd have a book 100 pages long, right? And that would be far more interesting than saying there's a load of pottery over there, a few walls, and um, there's an inscri inscription over there, right? Uh, for example, if we, we, we looked at an inscription in the Roman period uh, with the same analysis as we're doing in the Mesolithic period, um, we'd probably know who actually carved the stone and what they carved it with and um, when they carved it and all the rest of it, uh, which is not an exaggeration. So the problem is when we look at Ireland, we don't have as much surviving, or do we? We used to say that about mainland Britain when when um, uh, when we looked at Star Car when that was originally excavated in 1948, um, and when, when the, nobody ever thought that was there, and it was. So as a consequence, much of the richness of Mesolithic life, life is hard for us to understand, but we get now. I understand it. I'm sure you start to understand it now more than you did before. And I understand it a lot more than I did before. By teaching it, you're actually learning stuff as you go along. So as a con consequence, much of the richness of Mesolithic life is hard for us to understand, but I don't agree. Stone tools dominate this period, but now we're actually finding wonderful archaeological evidence like the stuff we're actually finding. So it's not just something like that. And even when we think, when, even when we say, oh, it's just about stone tools, and that's all we're finding, let's go into a little bit more detail with these. Mm. Archaeologists have developed very useful approaches to the stone tool evidence, including reconstructing the sources and movement of stone, experiment approaches to manufacture of stone tools, and scientific analysis of the working edges and surfaces of the tools that allow us to reconstruct their life histories. One of the key developments in the Irish Mesolithic is a change from um, the different types of tools that are actually using um so so what they're saying is that when stone tools in ireland are the same kind used throughout north uh west europe um but then suddenly towards the late the mesolithic they get very distinctive and they become very much sort of the, these 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 are very different in ireland ireland starts to sort of create their own stuff which is what we would understand what do we know so far so um so we've, we've got a little, we've, we've got, I think we might be able to get all, right, I'm not sure. Um, so at present, we ha know comparatively little about social organisation of the Mesolithic communities in, in Ireland. That's probably true. Uh, we, 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 I, I could probably tell you so much more what's going on in mainland Britain and, and other places than we actually can understand because we're still actually trying to understand what's going on in Ireland. Uh, we, we must not have generalizations when we look at Irish archaeology. We, we must open it to the same complex recognition that we're seeing elsewhere, looking at diversity and long-term successes of various different groups across Ireland. Uh, the outstanding evidence from Ireland is of great value uh, to try to understand 
um, and work against those bridges of, of archaeology to to really sort of um, maybe sort of uh, understand more uh, with Ireland. Uh, so Mesolithic fish traps from Clowenstown. So there we go. We've got fish traps. or eel, That's an eel trap, I think. I think that's more like an eel trap, that one. So what I'd like to do is, is, is the next little bit now. So there we go. Let's look at the eel trap. Um, I don't know if everyone wants a break. If they do, say now. But if not, I'm just going to keep going. Because sometimes when I'm doing something like this, I, it's very difficult to actually get back to it. So you've got more, more like a fish trap there um, or an eel trap, more like an eel trap if it's funneled um, to a little wicker basket at, at the right end. end. So what, I, what I'd like to do now is that we, we did, we, we did on, on Thursday, we looked at strontium, right, and, and this site. Uh, I think what I need to do is look at the excavation stuff to do with the site. And then what we could do is possibly go look at the strontium evidence, which would make more sense. That's equally fascinating. But if we don't do the strontium stuff, we can easily do it next week. Oh, hang on. Go back to the press. What have I done? Right, OK, go back there. Right, if we do that there... Oh, this is the one right to the excavation to the excavation the breach of the excavation there we go nice that right so so what what we've got with this hunter gatherer interactions at this site so the the excavations at hermitage near castle Con connell um as we know were being undertaken by 2001 pipe laying scheme and everything was found by complete accident um the area um which, as we know, is over um, 4,000 square meters. Was an air, the the area for excavation was approximately 450 meters long by 11 meters wide. So it's basically a strip across the River Shannon, right? It's 11 meter wide strip across the River Shannon for half a kilometer, which is quite a big area. The excavations revealed that this area had a long use, going through all the historical periods. So this being this being cremation pit A. Uh, a subcircular pit and a post hole was cut into its base. At the base of the pit around the post hole arranged in a crescent was the cremation itself. So in other words, um, the, the cremation was added, all the bones and everything, all, all the materials added around this post. Um, so the said that that's where the post um, sat. And as we know, that the polished axe, that's where the polished axe was. Um, and the polished axe was uh, pointing downwards. The fill of the pit contained one stone microlith and possibly a second, so the two stone microliths. So we've no idea what the charcoal is from the pit, except I was lying. We do know what the charcoal was from the pit. Um, and we, it was analysed, and the biggest problem is that they're now struggling to understand whether um, the, the the charcoal uh, relates to the base of the post, or the charcoal relates to um, the material that was being burnt to create the body in the first place. So we got a differentiation. So we still got to work out what the post, because when you when you put a post in the ground, you fire the one end. So that's what I'm talking about in regards to charcoal. But the 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 human remains were mixed in with charcoal, the material um, that was used to burn the remains in the first place. So the two trees that were identified are alder and crab apple, right? Now, this is the point. Is it is it just so this this is this is trying to work out what's going on. Was was that tree possibly alder or was it crab apple, right? Or, um, or is it that um, alder and crab apple made up all the cremated remains in the hole, and maybe um, alder was just also used for the post. 
So that question needs to be answered. And I don't think we've got an answer on that yet. Um, both types of wood would have been locally grown alongside the river. So, so still looking at that, still sort of focusing on, on, on that, there was cremation pit B, uh, which is the other cremation, and cremation pit C. This was a larger cremation pit, crit pit B, measuring, and the pit itself, it, 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 its, its proximity was 2.3 by 1.5 meters. This is how big the pit was. Uh, at a depth of 0.65 meters. The single fill contained the cremation with heat shattered stone and small fragments of baked and burnt clay. What? Baked and burnt clay? Hang on a minute, really? So what is this baked and burnt clay? What, what actually is that? Could it be indications of early pottery? What, what actually is that burnt clay? Is it, is it daub from a building? What is that? The pit edges did not exhibit evidence of burning. Right. Just, right, okay, so, uh, uh, so where they had the cremation was somewhere else. Is that what they're saying? And then they, they, they put all the stuff, which is not what would usually happen. There was also, um, there was also a pit C, right? There was also a pit T, C. Um, a pit C had two cremation pits within it. Uh, so, in other words, not only do we have uh, not only do we have cremation pit A and B, which represents two individuals, there was also a cremation pit C that we're still really starting to understand that had a depth of um, half a meter, uh, and that contained both of these two pits in 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 area C, which had two separate cremations, um, these, were, these were, it was impossible to identify what the cremated bone was, whether it's human or animal. So there we go. I'm sure we'd be able to work that out from DNA or something in the future. But then again, it's small fragments of bone, getting DNA out of that is going to be really difficult. So they, they do know that the wood actually used in, the, in those pits was actually crab apple. If that's the case, if we can presume um, that crab apple is the type of wood being used for cremation in all, in regards to all the sets of human remains, maybe the post in pit A was actually older. We don't know. And that's presuming that the one end of the post was actually fired in the first place to actually give it some kind of preservation. So the cremated human remains um, in pit A uh, were, were of one single adult male or female. Due to the volume of cremated bone material, it is suggested that this represents an entire individual. Interesting. So, so that's, that's likely that the cremation was directly in that locality. Um, and if you, if you possibly look, there might be signs on that edge of burning, right? So that might actually be the cremational pit. Uh, that all the bits of material went into after cremation. I, I don't know. Let's just leave that. This had been a well, well executed cremation, which demonstrates that the individual, um, the individual who carried out the task was skilled in the process. So in other words, the, the people or person who cremated, who undertook the cremation was very skilled. A single adult, um, sex unknown, was, was recovered from pit B. Uh, it is suggested from the small amount that this may represent only a small proportion of the individual in contrast to the original cremation in pit A. So in pit B, it's likely that it only represented part of an individual, not all of them. Or well, then again, they may not have been good at sweeping the remains into the hole or not. We don't know. Um, in this instance, uh, the entire body may have been cremated um, somewhere else. Um, and only small bits of the cremated remains were put in the pit. pit. Very little evidence of the pyre sites uh, was discovered, um, th though, though an area east of uh, Pit B indicates that there may have been another fire over there. It's a very difficult one. So what, what, what we actually got here is if we, we, we got some of the cremated remains which we looked at earlier on. Um, and if we go there, we got some radiocarbon dates, right? So we got some 
those are the two objects found in regards to pit A. Um, and what we've got, what we've got is some radiocarbon dates. So here we go. There we go. So radiocarbon dates of the charcoal burnt wood, which was dated, four samples dated. So here we go. So the samples are not quite 10,000 years ago, but they're close enough. Um, so this is uh, 9,550 years ago, pit A. Pit B is uh, 9,000. And so we've got a bit of a mixture of dates there. It's interesting that we've got all the dates of people being cremated there over a very, very long period of time. Very, very long period of time. So if we if we go there, yeah, fair enough. Um, not very good reconstruction. So uh, if we if we, we we will do a little bit of strontium tonight, but not too much. So the site at Hermitage is located what we would refer to as, as, as a classic Mesolithic location, a ridge above sort of watery ground. Mesolithic hunter gatherers who used hermitage interacted with nature by using local wood and stone. I like that. Although the excavation uh, did not yield evidence to show uh, of um, what their relationship was with the river and um, you know, yield firm evidence of a settlement. Other than that, we've got some nice evidence activity. Most unexpectedly, two well-preserved cremations were found, maybe um, a third and a fourth, uh, which is a type of burial, which is a type of cremated burial, which is so sophisticated it's not been found elsewhere. We said it's so sophisticated. I want uh, maybe maybe after maybe when we come to questions, I want somebody to tell me how easy it is to burn a set of human remains, right? Um, and therefore I'm wrong, and it's not a sophisticated way of burial. Just just try that one. Think about it. Somebody see if they can do that. Um, just, just, yeah, uh, Margaret, I, I'm going to set you a challenge. Not yet, but when we do, when we do questions, right? I want Margaret you to say that it's not very sophisticated to be able to burn human remains. It's easy. Find a way you can argue that one. Um, so obviously, the polished stone that we're seeing with these burials um, suggests that the buried person was important. While a post hole represents a grave marker, I'm going to say that everyone's important. Um, you know. Well, actually, yeah, bloody yes, I'm going to agree with it this time. Uh, if you're going through all the effort, Margaret, forget my question I asked you, but you've still got to answer this um, later. Um, I'm going to say that obviously they went through a lot of effort to cremate somebody. But then again, where are the other human remains for everybody else? Oh. Or is it? not that sophisticated to bury to burn somebody maybe they were so good at burning human remains it didn't mean much to them in the first place therefore anyway so the mesolithic finds at hermitage are internationally significant being amongst the earliest cremated burials in europe and probably the world so what we are going to do next is we're going to look do the the strontium thing right um uh, -da -da. Right, okay, I see two of Okay, okay, I'm just gonna have to do something a minute. Right, okay. Um, so what we may have to do is we may have to go through this strontium journey uh, because my phone is frozen where I've got my notes. So just gonna see if I can do this. We'll do that. Right, we'll just read it from the screen because my 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 other thing is locked. Uh, so what is strontium? Basically, we've got this reading out of the screen, which is fine. We're okay to do this. Uh, uh, chemical elements and its isotopes, um, providing a fingerprint of different rock types. So obviously, every rock on the planet has strontium. Um, it's it's basically low radioactive. So everything that we drink has sort of the, the radioactive element of strontium. Um, and these have been well mapped throughout the world. And we have a good general idea of what values to expect for areas with different bedrock. For example, places that have a limestone geology should have 
a different strontium signature to places that have a sandstone sandstone geology. So this is basically what we're talking about. So basically, there we go. We've got loads. We've got all those different rock types in Ireland, massively different rock types in Ireland. And okay, I'm just fiddling about with it. I think we'll just read from the screen. Hang on. Right, okay. So here we go. Um, right, so there we go. Uh, we can also analyze the strontium in human remains recovered from the archaeological excavations like Hermitage. What can strontium tell us? Scientific analysis of strontium have the potential to reveal where people were from, that is, where they grew up and lived and how an individual may have moved or migrated at different stages in their lives. This is very important for archaeology in its study of past people. So in other words, in our teeth and in our bones, we, we, we've got a signature of strontium from wherever we've been. Um, um, uh, basically, uh, everything that is living has levels of strontium in it and all the different rocks that we see in Ireland. How it works, strontium from the soil enters the food chain by being taken up by plants, which are then eaten uh, by animals, including humans. It then enters our bones and teeth, substituting for calcium. It neither harms nor benefits us, but is useful as a tracer of movement. A local strontium isotope signature of a particular area can be measured from modern plant samples. This baseline can then be compared to the results from archaeological samples of humans excavated in an area, and it can be determined if those individuals ori originated from the area as their strontium isotope values would be similar. And also, you can drink water. Um, you, whatever you're drinking water, Obviously, um, it, it's more trapped in plants that you eat, but whatever you're drinking water, uh, that's where the, the strontium's gonna, gonna hit you as well. Um, so there we go. If the strontium isotope values are significantly different, it can be concluded that the individual was not originally from that area, but was buried there, brought in from elsewhere. Um, in this case, their strontium reading can be compared to different strontium levels in different areas. So there we go. How strontium enters the biosphere, uh, sort of it enters the ground, um, and there we go, goes into the soil. Strontium substitutes, substitutes for, basically strontium is, is it's saying there, strontium uh, is a substitute for calcium in bones and, and, and teeth. Um, and there you go, it's uptaken by animals, grasses, trees, um, of which we all, uh, of at one stage eaten, um, you know, everything from the ground. So archaeological samples, in order to study strontium, human remains from archaeological excavations are required. Human remains dating to the Mesolithic period are very rare in Ireland. The remains from Hermitage are thus very important, but also present a special challenge since they are cremated. Ah, let's go on to this last journey. Strontium and its isotopes collect in the human body in tooth enamel and bone, and these are formed at different stages of a person's life. Tooth enamel forms from infancy through early adolescence and does not change in a person's ages. So the strontium isotope ratio of enamel matches the geology in the area where a person spent his or her childhood. And this is the thing. I, this isn't in the notes, and I'm going to tell you this now, that... Um, for example, um, what we what we could do, right, is we could break Andy's arm, um, and where the bone is actually rebuilding itself, it it put there's new strontium in it. So we can now work out that Andy's living on an arm side by analysing um, the bone tissue that's built up in the area where we broke one of Andy's arms. We could try that out, Andy. But the problem is you'd have to be dead for us to analyze which parts of Britain you are from. So we won't do that. By contrast, the strontium um, in bone gradually changes over time. And so it refers to the region where people spent the last decade or so of their lives. Um, and obviously the early part of their lives by matching the strontium isotope ratios in bones and teeth to those in specific geographic uh, regions. It could be possible to tell where a person migrated between childhood and death, and sometimes can even pinpoint where the person was born. So there we go, Pete. We'll be able to work out where you're from. 
Most studies prefer to analyze tooth enamel since this is a more resist resistant to contamination with strontium from the burial environment. Teeth, if I punch you and a tooth fell out, we could put that to a laboratory and we could work out where you spent most of your life, Pete. Cheers. But I wouldn't punch you, Pete. That wouldn't be very nice. Uh, bone is normally not a good material for analysis, but once it is cremated, it also becomes very resistant to further chemical changes, even more so than enamel. This is particularly important in the study of hermitage cremation. Since enamel was not recovered, it is lost uh, during cremation. Oh, bugger. But they were able to um, understand what was going on. And the last point is initial results from hermitage. The initial finds from the hermitage human remains is that the individual buried in pit A uh, likely spent at least the last decade of their life in the local area. So that strontium values are similar to that of plants growing here. However, uh, the results from pit B um, individual are not consistent with the local region, suggesting that this individual either moved to Hermitage sometime prior to their death, or perhaps their cremated remains were brought there specifically for burial. Uh, their most likely origin is to the west in, in County Limerick or County Clare. So in other words, um, people have come to the place to be cremated or buried. It's great. There we go. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, and finally, it says a tree at Hermitage contains a local strontium signature. This can then be compared to the values on the human remains from pit A and pit B found at Hermitage. Um, and there's one of the trees that will give a link um, to a not so to the strontium values in um, the human remains to understand where people are from. So on that note, um, I didn't think we'd get through all that tonight. So what we're going to do, we're going to call that a day. Um, and we're going to uh, see if there's any questions. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to pick on Margaret. Margaret, are you able to battle me? Um, well, I wonder if they cre cremated them on like a funeral pyre and then put them in the pit afterwards. Yeah, well, that's what we're saying, but, yeah. but, we, but uh, we are saying that, but is it easy to create somebody, Margaret? You're supposed to be saying well, yes. I think um, probably the fatty parts of the bodies would burn quite easily, but the bony bits like the fingers and the feet probably would have been harder to burn. Be because, because what they do today, they use gas because we can't have huge burial piles across the landscape burning oh. our loved ones. So we use GAT. And, 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 um, and I'm going to say it. Uh, when, the, when the SS were trying to dig up burial pits for people who'd been shot in Poland, whilst the uh, Russians are advancing to try and get rid of the evidence, the bodies that they dug out of the ground were emaciated and obviously most of the flesh, some of the flesh had decayed. Yeah. Even when they put them into the gas chambers, they really struggled to mm. actually burn those human remains. So it was in, it's incredibly hard to burn human remains. It is. Incredibly, yeah. even yeah. when you deflesh human remains. So Margaret, I want you to tell me that, that it's no special thing that the Mesolithic people did that, or are you gonna come with me and say that is a very special thing, highly advanced technology. That's what I'm saying. What are you going to say? Well, to have reduced them to, to nothing, really, just to ashes, I would have thought would be very difficult back then. I don't know how they could have got a furnace as, as so hot to do that. But but, the, but the, then again, Margaret, they did it. They did. Mm. But how? Yeah, exactly. But they did do it. That's the point. They did do it. They did do it. Margaret, um, I, now I've bullied you. Is there anything you want to say? Uh, no, but this uh, book in our archive, it was written by somebody called Michael O'Kelly and his wife. It was his lifetime's work. And um, he, he did all the archaeology at Newgrange. Uh, but uh -huh. he mentions, actually, there's a little plan of Mount Sandal, County Derry of the Mesolithic site um, that he yeah. back in the 1980s. And there were quite a lot of um, uh, huts there, roundhouses, a lot more 
than they've actually found. The ones that they found were protected because they were down in a hollow. And uh, as you said, they're about six meters in diameter. Each had a central yeah. path. And uh, they think they were saplings that had been thrust into the ground in a circle and just bent over and tied at the top. And they didn't show any internal supports. So are those widely different to the ones that have been found at Starcar, for instance? Did you say? Yeah, well, well we, so, sorry, Anna, a minute. Um, we, we, we do. We, we, we haven't really. We, we don't have enough evidence to understand, but there are some supports. There are some supports with the ones that we've seen at Hoyk. Mm. Um, not as many post holes as we would like. Um, and there are post holes associated with some of the ones at Star Car. Mm. Um, but I would say that the diameter is the fact that they've got these big buildings. That's got the one thing they got in common. So mm. yeah, floating that one around. But we do we do have we do have structural post holes at Boulder Criff as well. So right. Yeah. So anything else, Margaret, before we go on to Anne? Well, in, in this book, again, it says that practically the whole of Ireland was covered in a layer of chalk and the only flint was to be found in the northeast. Yeah, but chalk, but flint is found in chalk. That's a bit odd. Mm, well, it, well, it just says that most of the flint is found in the northeast of Ireland. Oh. Uh... But down in Pembroke, at that that the uh, by Mill Bay, there was a there was a, a, a medieval an old village there, and they 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 got their flint from Southern Ireland. Oh. There was lots of flint nappings there, mm. but that flint apparently had been taken from Southern Ireland. Did glaciation affect the south of Ireland? Did it go uh, down well, that? well, it's bound to a, to a certain extent. Did it go extent, down yes. that far? Well, the, the thing is, at different stages, it would have. But but yeah. what what when when are we talking? You know, that's that's the thing. Mm. Well, when, the when glaciation, but only move stone from place to place, doesn't create it. Mm. Well, this chap reckons that there was no land bridge after 20,000 years ago, but this was written in the 1980s, so I dare say yeah. they've discovered a lot more since then. True, 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 true. Apparently these, these people traded with Southern Ireland to get their prints. Mm. So it said. Yeah. So it said. So it said. So it said, yeah. So it said. Right, so, okay, okay then, right, what we're going to do, have you said everything now, Margaret? Yeah, yeah. Right, we've got to go over to uh, Anne. Go on, Anne. Well, I, well, I was just um, not quite understanding what Margaret was saying. I was just, That's why I interjected. I'm sorry. Um, right. I thought Do you she understand said, what Margaret was saying? Well, and there were no post holes, and they were six metres around. That seemed huge so to, if, to if, tie if, something if rest, up. Six metres is big. If you rest as an arc, right, uh, and you... But then again... Um, binding all that together, um, that's going to be incre yeah, incredibly complicated to create yeah. something like a teepee. So yeah. that the post, the, the thrust goes into the ground. Yeah. But you you still got to lock these in the middle. So if if you if you got if you if you got them overlapping as sort of uh, Y staves, right, and you unlock these into the ground, then maybe you could do that. But again, it's still incredibly complicated technology. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's in incredible. The thing is, the thing is, we're we're only touching the surface of understanding that, and that was a bit of a bit of a complicated thing of of of, of seeing that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. When I was so, over in Jersey, they were trying to um, re uh, reproduce the cutting of a tree with a flint axe, and to cut us a, a uh, even a small tree with about uh, seven or eight inches in diameter would take something like 12 to 18 hours to actually cut it mm -hmm. with a flint axe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Mm. Uh, okay, so let, let's see. Have you got anything you, else you want to say, Anne? No, no, thank you. What, what, we'll do all the women first. Um, Andy. 
Um, yeah, a couple of things. Um, I uh, th those post holes are interesting depth. They are the same depth as you would dig a hole today to put a fence post in. So um, it may be possible, of course, that they only made them short, but it would take anything up to a two meter high post like that, nice and solidly. Um, so uh, it's obviously a significant thing there that they're marking it. And those dates are very interesting because they're spanning several thousand years, those dates, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, mass um, massively. We've, we've, only, we've only got four. There might have been loads of them. It's just yeah, the ones well, that... I, I could... would suspect there were more, but yeah. But it also kind of contradicts this thing about these people wandering through the landscape if they're burying everybody in the same place. And why go to such an elaborate way of burial? Because that those tiny little bits of bone, that's what they do today. You burn it and then you grind it down to make it into a smaller, more even thing for, for whatever reason. Mm. Um, and they've put it into that thing. They've put it in with that axe or the ads, which they have made presumably specially or something for it. But significantly, it's been placed in, not just chucked in uh, and the totem of some sort. So it's got to be of a significant height to have some sort of markings on it. That's an awful lot of work to go to for people that are traveling around, just wandering around, following the food. Would yeah. they have ground up the bone with something? Well, they have to have done to make like it look like that. Vessel and mortar kind of style. Yeah. 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 I, I'll, ju I'll just bro broken it up. In, but, but the thing yeah. is, we, we don't, that it's could be analyzed as well. Do you know there's we, a whole we, we process. Yeah. yeah, there's a whole elaborate Very... process and, and an elaborate, uh, I won't say ritual, but a whole system that they've gone through to do all of that. And not just once, but several times and over a long period of time. So they won't have just done it once and then thought, oh, coincidentally, we'll bury someone 500 years later and do it the same way. They have to have been doing it for all of that time to remember how to do it and to do it. It's not yes. it's too much of a coincidence. Yes, yeah. yes. But completely yes. pulverized, not no odd bits of finger or toe. It's no. just... It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, this is highly skilled. This has been done for yes. quite some time. Yes. That, that is the point. This With, is the point. This has been done for quite some time. There would be there would be settlements. There would be people yes. living in that vicinity. Yes. That, yes. So this is this is evidence now. This is yeah. evidence of settlement, even yes. though we haven't got it yet. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. Totally right. And and all, uh, Andy also to uh, have the time to do that to collect yep. the wood to have dry wood yep. to you know you, you're gonna have to have it under cover. Um, yep. Island can be very damp, like bits of West Wales. Uh, you know, it, it's yep. just like yeah, you you've got so by not having not by this is this is really inferred. Uh, it's okay, Andy. We're just gonna chuck it this way, right? This isn't something that's done on a Wednesday afternoon. No, you've got to have the food to eat while you're doing that. You've got to have all the infrastructure in there. It's totally sophisticated. Modern, it's like a modern, modern day crematorium. In, exactly. It? It's a modern society, you know, yeah. on the grounds. It, it has to be so complicated and so yes. well arranged yes. to be able to do that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, all, all the way there, Andy. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Wow. Okay, that's brilliant. Are there no um, marker stones, or there's no evidence? No. Well, well, the no. thing, the post, it, the post itself is the evidence. That's, that's it's just, it. It's just the, the, This is the point. I've said this before. This concept, the the sense of wood, is is their sense of permanence. Yeah. Our sense of okay. permanence is in stone. But then again, you can smash a stone up. You can chuck it in a river. You know, uh, yeah. their sense of permanence is is wood. Right. Wood breaks down in the soil. It goes back right, to the soil. That's permanent because it's part of the soil. Yeah. Mm. Right. So we, we Andy, have you done your bit? Yes, thank you. So we've done Andy, Margaret. Anne, have we done you, Anne? Yeah. Uh, we've done you, Margaret. Oh, Yay. no, Drina, Drina. We have done Drina. Go on, Drina. No, I just wonder whether the word mortar has any significance. The pestle and mortar. Because that's the start of mortuary, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. Uh, mortarium. Just mortarium, the mortarium, yeah. Yeah. Mortar yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, mortar, mort yeah. I'm pl plucking at straws. Play, play, play. Oh, Shut up, you. Yeah, no, that's true. It, it is mortarium, mortar, mortuary. Yeah, it's all play on words. Yeah, exactly. You're right, Drina. Morgan. Oh, Drina, is that it, Drina? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you've ruined my daydream now that's it I, I, I've waited I've waited for three weeks to listen to you and that's all you've got to say forget it that was uh, wait, wait. Oh, one of the books that I'm reading is saying that people peoples were seasonal and they would do foraging in the summer and hunter gathering in the winter yeah and if they got together it would be a special day yeah but then, then again, then again, that might be one community that does that. The, the some yeah, communities do other things. So, yeah. so, so you know, when you said that, I thought, oh my God, right? Have, have we not? But, but the thing is, that's only part of the picture. That this, it's like to modern day society. All it's only bits of part of the picture. Okay, I'll chuck this at oh, you. In COVID, in, in, co in COVID, there were people living completely normal lives, right, unaffected by COVID at all. When we thought everyone was in the same boat, I knew people who were traveling up down the country in lorries, just taking stuff and it wasn't even affecting their lives. So the point is, it's not all, it's not one fits all, you know? No, of course not. No, no. And, 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 and it's just, this, it's, it would be this statement, right? We all voted for the new prime minister. No, we bloody didn't. Right, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, is that it, Drina, now, yeah? Yes, thank you. Right, what about you, Pete? Uh, well, not a lot, really. Just they're looking at the temperature needed for uh, for a cremation. Yeah, it, it would normally have to be some form of furnace, with so you've got a, an indraft of air to to raise the, uh, the 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 burning of the wood to such a temperature that to break down the body. Perhaps uh, just just that. burning a body on a pyre mm. would leave you with uh, large remains, not. Not the small remains that you were showing, that were showing there earlier. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They could make a bellows out of animal skin. The, 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 the thing, the thing oh, is, yeah. at the end of the day, they, they, they could have had an updraft. They, they could have had, um, yeah. they, 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 they could have done anything. The fact of the matter is we, we don't have the evidence there, right? But we can presume. And, for, for example, we've... Um, you know, we, we had some potatoes on Sunday that we grew here, right? Um, and we've got all different ways that we're planting the potatoes. We, we, we've we got um, a, a bed of earth, which has been built up, which you put potatoes in there. We've got a slit trench that we put potatoes in and we've, we've, we've piled up the side and all the rest of it, right? None of that's going to leave any evidence how we ate the potatoes, right? Did you However, have to make it? And well, I used to put it... Well, yeah, Just maybe so dams. Just I just use my hands, my nails. Have you seen my? Oh my god, my nails are not dirty today. Oh, never mind. There, 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 there you go. Look, look how dirty my nails are. You see the ends there? They're just dirty. There you go. Yeah. Right. Shut up, you. Uh, right. Have we done you, Pete? And, and yeah, what we'll do? Yeah. We'll do Roger. And he'll, uh, Roger, David. He'll disappear. Right. Okay. I would say, Andy, I do have your money now. Right. I, I do have. Um, what's her name? What's his name? Mag Margaret. So, so obviously, um, we'll, we'll wait for everybody else. Um, David's probably sent it, so I'm not. So, I've said that now. That's it. We know what we're doing next week. Next week, um, do you know what we're going to do next week? We're gonna, um, this has been really intense today. Um, I want to do something like next week. We'll do Cheddar Man next week. I know we're, we're, we're aware of him, uh, and we'll do, um, We'll also do, what else did I say? We'll, we'll look at some of the adzes and axes and stuff. I want to do something a little bit lighter next week. We haven't this has done been really... Jersey. We haven't done Jersey yet. Oh, shut up about bloody Jersey. <laughs> you said we were going to do that ages ago and we still haven't done it. I think we did a bit of Jersey, but we're, we're okay. We might do a little bit of Jersey just to keep <laughs> you happy so you're not moaning. Okay. Uh, look at that, it get ready for bed. We Willy Winky, right? Okay, on that note, is there anything you want to say, David? Uh, what well, we're going to do, we're going to say good night and goodbye to David before he says anything. <laughs> good night. Bye. Bye -bye. Oh, right, nothing from David. Good night, David. I'll see you soon. It's been a pleasure yeah, as night. ever. Good night. Good night, Dave. Bye. All right, Dave. I'm going to send David Bye. a question to answer us. So, so, yeah. See you, David. My pleasure as ever. Andy, you're gonna to have to send David a question to answer. So, you know. <laughs> He's gonna say something one day and we're gonna be gobsmacked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I he think... does say something, it's usually very interesting. It is. Yeah, oh yes. Yeah, I th yeah I but think... I've been waiting I've been waiting for six months. 
the uh, the, the funeral pyre thing. I think you got to remember that there's, there's still quite a lot of countries still do that. I mean, India in particular, yeah, they they yeah, do it, yeah, and they yeah. just do put a pile of logs that's, together that's and, right, and burn do. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that how much of the body does that actually destroy? I, yes. I yeah. don't. I think it. I think they do quite a lot of it because they tend to sort of sweep the ashes and chuck them in the river after that, into the because it's the holy river, isn't it? So, but yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't know how much it leaves. You know, mm. but they I mean, send them down the Ganges. Yeah, yeah, still ablaze, a bit like the. Bag. Oh no, 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 no! They, they burn them. Just the ash. Just put the oh, ashes okay. in. Mm. But I don't think there's a lot left. But I, I remember going to one of the. Uh, uh, concentration camps and the, and and the ovens there still had bones in and ash. Yeah. Um, Bloody hell, Andy! Yeah, because they 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 oh. uh, they'd left it deliberately so you could oh. see it because they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't get you know even by burning it they didn't get rid of it all and they they were gas ovens you know so. Oh, I couldn't bear that. Yeah. I wonder if they drained the bodies of their blood. No, just burn it. Well, just burn it. You think they just yeah yeah. Well, we think. Yeah. Bloody hell, guys. Yeah. Well, mm. yeah. And I wonder who those people were. Did they arrive by land or did they get there on a boat? The, the, thing, the thing is, all I can say is that they had the skills to do the cremation. They must have been there for some time yeah, yeah, yeah. in the landscape to understand this. And all I'm going to say is this, right? Think of it like Stonehenge. Stonehenge was never erected mm. in a week, and to be able to develop the skills yeah. of the Stonehenge, it must have been practiced for hundreds of years, if not thousands, before they ever got to that level. And they had the adzes. Adzes are for making boats. Ah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Among, amongst boats. other things, but yeah. 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 But it really good for making boats with. As ever, most of the evidence will be under the sea, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or on the top of a mountain. Ah, aye, yes. aye. Which, 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 which we're actually finding a lot of evidence there on top of mountains. Yeah. So uh, if, if, if we find a Mesolithic settlement, you know, you'll be the first to hear about it 20 years later when it's all excavated. Right, okay then. Um, right, what we're going to do is, uh, Andy, we're going we're gonna to call it a night, I think. Um, and I'm just going to mention for Anne... And Drina and Margaret, uh, maybe um, you could all start thinking about getting together and maybe all oh. getting into David's kitchen. We want to know more about his kitchen. Good night, all. Right, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Good night. Good night. If nobody's got anything good else night. to say, Margaret and no, thank you. Andy. Good. Interesting. I'll see you all Thanks. next week. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Take care, my lovers. Bye. Bye bye. Take care. Take care. Anne's left. Oh, she's gone. Anyway, thanks for watching tonight. Um, don't forget chat. Don't forget to go in the chat box. And uh yeah, it's been good tonight, I think. Chat box. But nothing in chat. Nothing in chat. Nothing in chat. Deep breath. Ah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been a good one tonight. It's been very intense. So take care. All right, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.